Copying memory during heap compaction is an expensive business. To minimize the overhead, optimizations have been made. Studies have shown that the newest objects die quickly. This is because they are usually created within a function call and go out of scope when the function returns. Older objects tend to stay alive much longer, often because they are referenced from global or static classes. The garbage collector therefore groups allocated objects into short-lived or generation 0, medium-lived or generation 1, and long-lived or gen 2. New objects automatically join gen 0 and are promoted to gen 1, then gen 2, when they survive one or more garbage collections. The garbage collector compacts Gen 0 objects most frequently as they are the most likely to need collecting. It collects Gen 2 as infrequently as possible. By focusing on objects most likely to need collecting, there's a significant performance gain over compacting the entire heap all the time. But don't forget, the more the garbage collector runs, the bigger the impact on performance. Here, we have a more detailed look at the small object heap with objects grouped into the respective generations. Object A has survived at least two garbage collections. Object B has survived one, and objects C and D have been recently allocated and haven't been inspected by the garbage collector yet. The garbage collector sets memory thresholds for each generation. If the total size of objects in a generation exceeds its threshold, then the garbage collector attempts to compact that generation. It will compact the younger generations as well. If a Gen 0 garbage collection takes place now, the collector would identify object C as rootless and so overwrite it with object D. Object D will have survived the garbage collection and will be promoted to generation 1. So let's see that. A Gen 0 garbage collection is running. It's going to just look at generation 0 objects. So it's identified C is rootless and it's class D within generation 1. Gen 0 is now empty and the next object pointer is reset. If a Gen 1 garbage collection takes place, it will look at objects D and B. Now notice that they're both rooted objects, so all that will happen is objects B and D will survive garbage collection, but they'll be promoted into generation two. So gen one runs. We have objects A, B and D belonging to generation two. Generation one is empty, generation zero is empty, and generation one garbage collection is complete. Okay, so what will happen when a gen two garbage collection takes place? Don't forget, each of these separate garbage collections for each of the generations is based on the size of the objects in each generation. And only when it reaches one of those thresholds will the collection run for that generation and the younger ones. So let's see a Gen 2 collection. What should happen here is the garbage collector will identify D and B as rooted objects and copy them over the rootless object A. The next object pointer will be reset. And because there's only three generations, objects D and B will remain in Gen 2. As you can see, the next object pointer is now set at the top of Gen 0, ready for the next allocation. The garbage collector runs for each generation based on a set of thresholds. Gen 0 collection occurs when the size of Gen 0 objects reaches approximately 256k, Gen 1 at 2 megabytes, and Gen 2 at 10 megabytes. .NET actually optimizes these thresholds based on the memory usage profile of the application. It's most productive to collect Gen 0 objects frequently. These are the objects that are most likely to be rootless. Collecting Gen 2 objects has the biggest performance impact because the entire heap is collected, as is the large object heap. 